Hiya folks. A bit rainy today, but uh, at least the snow's gone now. I've got a little bit of a show and tell for you, and let's go and have a look in the log cabin afterwards and uh, have a look, see what parts I've bought for the TGB moped. I'll see you in a minute. Right, well, we've been scouring the internet again, and as you probably know, these bikes here, which I've got here, are basically for investment purposes. They will appear on the channel at some time, maybe in the future, but um, I bought them for sort of uh, making a bit of money in the future sort of thing, so that's the reason why I bought these. And we found another one, so this is another investment bike. You're not gonna see it on the channel for a long, long time, I wouldn't have thought, but um, this is it. Let me turn it around and show you. So this is a little, Yamaha FZR 400. It's what they would have called a grey import back in the 80s. It's a 1986, I think, on a D-plate. And uh, yeah, I got it at such a good price. And literally, when I made contact with a chap who was selling it, he said that after that, his phone went mad. He had so many people wanting to buy it at the price that he had it out for. I didn't pay the price that he had it out for. I got it a little bit cheaper, but um, I made the commitment. I said, uh, right, okay, we'll come and have a look at it now and we'll pay you over the do a bank draft and all that, so we've done that. And here it is, I've got it. So it's another investment, let's, let's show you around it. So it's a little twin headlight one, which I do prefer to be honest with you. And the thing why I bought it is that it's, it's all there. It's all complete. It needs work done on it, obviously. There's a few brakes on the fairing and all that, but uh, that's not a problem. It was a runner when he uh, laid it up. And uh, I've got the steering lock on at the moment, so I can't do nothing about it. But uh, as you can see, it's a, uh, Nice little tool, and it's all original, as I said to you, so I uh, can't really show you too much about it, but uh, one of the early FZRs, and uh, it's got a missing wing mirror there, but that's not a problem at all, but uh, everything's complete. The forks are in pretty good nick as well, so that's one thing which is quite expensive if you, uh, if you have uh, pitted forks and all that. The fork legs are not a problem, I can get them done, but uh, as you can see, it's a... Uh, Nice looking little bike, little racer from the 1980s. Pure sport, so that's another little project which we got. Again, for investment purposes, I will restore it, but um, when, when these opportunities come up, you've got to take them. And if we have a little look along here, Project Man actually found a, another good deal as well. <laughs> He's got these little ones. He basically got one and got one free. So again, he got this for a good price. This is a little Yamaha RXS 100. This actually does run and it's MOT'd. So this one is a runner, believe it or not. So um, he got this one as a spare to go with it. And as you can see, it's, it's a bit sorry, but uh, it may be restorable, I'm not sure yet. He hasn't got a number plate with that one, but we've got the VIN number, the chassis number and the engine number. So uh, we may do a check on that and find out what the score is with that. But uh, yeah, so he's got this little RXX 100. I don't, know, I don't know whether we've shown you this yet on his channel, but uh, again, another restoration project. That'll be a nice little easy restoration project. And these are starting to go for silly money as well now on um, on eBay. If you look on the on eBay, they're going about 1,500 quid or even a bit more. So there you go. That's another investment. He got this, again, silly money. I'm not going to tell you how much, but he got that for silly money. Right, back in the workshop. Right, I wanted to show you this because I did show this on my Butler's Empire channel, but um, I got this from me Electrostatic Magic, the people who do my powder coating equipment, and uh, they sent me this, it's called the Versa Tray. There you go. It's a little uh, non-stip, non-stip, non-slip tray, like a parts tray, which you can use in your workshop or actually indoors, you can use it for various different things. And it's a rubberized tray, and it's got different segments on it as well. Now, I had a thought afterwards, when I did show it on my Butler's Empire channel, that um, this would be handy, and I didn't realise, for when we actually take carburetors apart. Those of you who do small engine repairs and stuff like that, uh, like lawnmower repairs and things like that, I normally use an old cooking tray, which is okay, but uh, nine times out of 10, when you're cleaning stuff down and you're taking things apart, you're laying them in the same tray, which you've got all the crap on, all the, all the rubbish on and all that, and, it's, it's quite easy to get stuff lost and maybe thrown away within the dirt. But with this thing, if you take apart the carburetor, you can put the different like, seg segments in the different areas on the tray because you've got these little segmented trays on it sort of thing, you know? So the only thing I wanted to check was whether or not it was going to be any good for using like a carb cleaner or whatever. So I'm going to do a little test on it here by just um, squirting some... Oh, I've got some here, look. Squirting some 
carb cleaner on it to make sure that it doesn't damage it at all. So you can clean your carbs down without any worries of uh, it damaging the part. And again, it's easy, look, it's easily wiped down at the end of it. So you can take your carb, your part, your carb apart on the, the main part there. And as you're taking out the needle jet or the float or whatever, and the different jets or whatever, look, you've got the little segments there to put it in. And then you've got it all confined in one space sort of thing. So that's the Versa tray. And uh, yeah, that's what I'm now gonna be using that for. These are fine an old cooking tray, but as I said, you normally put taking the parts apart and leaving them on the same tray sort of thing, and here you can keep them separate sort of thing. So I won't be using that anymore. I'll be using the new Versa tray. I'll try and leave a link in the description below if it's on their website yet. I'm not too sure whether it's on their website yet, the Electrostatic Magic website, but um, do take a look at it. So let's put that over there. So as I said, I bought a few things for the um, TGB moped. I've got uh, a new set of uh, variator weights, which we're going to check out in a minute because I don't know what the original weight of the original ones was. They was damaged anyway. I've got a new um, a variator belt to go on there as well. I've got a new spark plug. I've got a pair of studs for the exhaust um, going into the barrel. And I've also got a gasket as well, as well as a new clutch I bought. So let's go next door. And, uh, oh, I don't know, I've got my scales here, and I? Hold on. I've got the actual weighing scales here. Let's actually weigh these weights. Oh, these ain't been used for a while. Let's stay my scales, look. So let's put them down there. Let's go and get the old weight and let's weigh the variator weights to find out what they was. I thought they were, I, was got, I think I've gone lighter with these ones. These are 5.5 grams each. Let me go and get one of the old ones and we'll weigh it. Right, let's turn my scales on first of all. I don't know whether or not you can see that or not. It's just going through its check at the moment. I'll have to clean these up properly, won't I? Right, that's on zero at the moment. So this is the old variator here with the old weight still in it. So if I take that cover off there, you can see the weights underneath. There's the old, oh, there's the old variator weights. Now these, as I've said to you, are sticky in here and they're also, let's get one out. They're also a bit flat in places as well. There's a, they've been worn a bit flat in places. There's a couple of flats on them there and they're not the best in the world. So I don't know how much these weigh. Let's have a look. All right, so if I just put one in them, oh, I've got to zero it first. Let's zero, it's on zero anyway. I'll just zero it. And I'll put the old one on there. Yeah, all oh, they're quite heavy. Look, they're nine grams. 8.99 to nine grams. So they're quite a heavy weight. So if I take out one of these new ones, these should apparently be 5.5 grams. So let's take one of them out. Let's get that off of there. Make sure it's zeros. And put one of these on. This should be 5.5 grams. Yeah, there we go. So yeah, that is correct. They are 5.5 grams. And what this should do for the acceleration is allow the bike to get higher up the rev range. Now, there is an art in uh, all this sort of stuff, so that's not the be all and end all. That also depends on what weights you've got. Uh, sorry, not what weights, what um, springs you've got in the uh, actual clutch mechanism, and also what main clutch variator spring you've got. It's a big spring, you get them all, all different tensions. So depending on what combination of stuff I've got, will depend on what how this performs. So I'm gonna start off with them first of all anyway. And I needed this sort of stuff before I could actually put the, uh, or finish the engine and get the engine case back together. So let's just put that in there like that for the moment. So that's the variator. And I've also bought a brand new clutch for it as well. So um, I thought, well, I might as well put it in. I'm doing all this sort of work, so I might as well put this new in as well. So anyway, that's what I've got for that. So let's go next door, have a look at the TGB mo uh, moped now and see how far I've got with that. Right, so here we go. I've got the TGB engine here. And I'm at the stage now, as you said, where I can start putting stuff back together. So if I just pull that forward, hold on, let's get that over there. Bring the engine forward now. If you've watched my other TGB motor engine, you know I've got the head and barrel back on. Uh, and I couldn't put the variator on and stuff like that because I didn't have them parts. So let's start doing this now. So that will go on first. We've then got the variator which needs to go on. I need to take out these old weights now, which are these eight or nine gram weights. Let's just get them out. And sometimes these have to go in a certain way, but these ones I think you'll find are all uniform and the same. So I'll just drop them into 
slots. And again, literally just make sure they roll out easy, which they all do. So the cap goes back on like that with them little black things there. So then we've got to turn that over and drop that in. Right, so we installed the, the roller now, which that little ridge there goes on the inside. Some of these, when they restrict these, they put a little collar over the top of these so that the uh, belt can't reduce in size so much. So that's a, a restriction which we haven't got on this one. So that's that installed. Right, so I've just dug up the old uh, clutch setup here, and this is the old clutch here, which is a bit rusty, but I don't think it was actually too bad, to be honest with you. It looks in pretty good condition, but we're obviously doing away with that. So this is the old rear setup here, and as you can see, that opens and closes as well. So uh, you can actually change these springs on the clutches as well to stronger or weaker springs will determine how far it flows out and also this main spring here is also what you can change to what the performance ratio and the way the power comes in as well so as i said it's a combination of all three things you've got the variator weights you've got the clutch springs there and you've got the main pressure spring there all contribute to the way the power is delivered on one of these mopeds so we put a 70 cc kit on a 50 cc we've got to use a bit of trial and error right okay so let's get this back section on that goes on there like that what i can do now actually while i'm here is just slide the belt over while it's uh in this position right so that's that in there like that then we've got this big spring here which sits on there like that and this is the fun bit you've got now let's get the new clutch out first let's just get that out So again, this is the new clutch, which is, yeah, just checking it with the old one. That's okay. So that's got to be compressed on there with the big spring. So what I normally do, I'll take this off for a minute. I shouldn't have put it on there yet. Is you normally get this all compressed first. Then the bell housing has got to go on top of that afterwards. But we've got to compress this spring and then get the big nut on the top of it. And I think the nut's a normal way round, so let me just check that first. If it tightens up the normal way. Or is it a left-handed thread? I can't remember. No, it's a normal left normal thread. Okay, so I have compressed these in a vice before, but I'll try and do it by hand. First. So put that in there. This is where it does pay to have two people to be honest with you. Yeah, and I don't think I'm gonna be able to hold that down in the one place, so, no, <laughs> typical, isn't it? I will have to compress it, I think. Would be handy, because I can push it down all right, but then you need the second hand to do the nut up, and I can't do the nut up, as you can see. All right, a bit unorthodox, just way of doing it, but uh, I've got a big G-clamp here. Let me just try and wind that down. Oh, I've got a couple of threads on there, but it doesn't seem to be going on all that far. I'll just take that off for a minute. Like that. Hang that there. Let's just have a look under there. That looks all right. Just take that off. I think it's just tightness around these, the clutch plates there. Yeah, that one drops down a lot further. So this second uh, new clutch, I'll have to fold these open a little bit more because that's binding on that and not going down fully so that's just a manufacturing issue so i'm just going to open that little thing up there a little bit just smooth the edges off because it's just like her burrs or whatever and then i'll come back to you right i've just opened that up with a file and now it goes on a treat as you can see we've got nice thread sticking through there now which we didn't have before so round two try again these little things I sent the triers, get the spring on there again like that, put the clutch again on like that, turn that round and then I've got to push this down, just so I get that underneath like that and then start winding up until I can get me 
clamp back on, bear with me. Here we go. Right. Okay, so I'll just hold that like that. See, it just gives me a free hand having that one there like that. Just to get that nut on. There we go. Now we're on. Now we're on. That's it. We're under tension now. So now I'll just tighten this nut up. I'll take this off now, look. There we go. Just tighten that off now. And now I can tighten this up with a socket. And then that will be that assembled. Then we can put the bell housing over the top and bolt that all back in. So let's just tighten this up. Again, this is only a fine thread in this. I don't know what the torque figure is, but um, I'll just tighten it, snug it up, so to speak. It's only a fine thread, so just be careful. Right, okay, so that's that back on. So that can go over there. Stick that over the uh, variator like that. Right, okay, so that's that. While I'm there, I will just uh, nip that up a bit more. Well, in fact, I'll nip that up in a minute, so. Let's bring that forward again. And let's put this part of the variator back on, like that. And then we've got the big nut to go on there. This is a left-handed thread, this one, so undo to do up. So again, this is a left-handed thread. So undo to tighten up. There we go, so that's done up. That's that back on. We've now got this little mechanism to go back on, so let's whack that on. I've got the three screws to take out of there. We're virtually there now on this um, variator. I had a few little sticking points along the way, but uh, you expect that. Well, I do anyway. <laughs> right, so this little assembly can go back in. Like that. There we go. I'll just nip these little screws up here. And the final one. Three. All right, okay, that's them. This is for the uh, kickstart mechanism. This thing, this little kickstart mechanism clutch there, so. Ah, there we go, yeah, that's fine. Right, so that's that. That's fine there. I'm happy with that. That turns over fine. So now we've got the clean bell housing to go back on, which literally just sits on there like that. And then we've got our lock nut to go on there like that. Now what I will do is I'll put a bit of Loctite on there. So I've just got the old thread lock here. You don't want it flying off. Just a tad on the thread. Spin that on. There's a normal thread on here. So just nip up that 14 mil nut now. Again, it's thread locked. There we go. There we go, that's on now. And that, my friends, is the clutch and variator all back together. All I've got now is to put this mechanism here for the kickstart lever, and then I can put this cover back on. I'll just screw these two brand new exhaust studs in as well that I've got. There we go, there's one, and there's two. Just keep them there for safekeeping. Okie dokie, that goes on that way around. So I need the kickstart mechanism to go on there, which I've got here. And there's a spring somewhere. So that sits in there. Okie dokie, so we've got the um, kickstart mechanism on. If I just turn that upside down and hold that under a little bit of tension, push that over there like that, and hopefully that should marry in. There we go, on the dowels. So we'll just go around and put these screws back in their holes. I'll put a bit of lube on them as well, just to, in case we have to take them out again. Right, 
Right, there we go, little wipe over. Bring that forward. I will stick the plug in wire here. Just stops any rubbish going in there, doesn't it? There we go. No need to tighten the net. Well, that's it. That's the TGB engine basically back together. Just a few ancillaries to go back on. I'm happy with that. Definitely happy with that. So uh, that's the TGB engine back together. Right, well, that's all I'm going to do in this video. We've got the main part of the engine put back together now. There's a couple of things I do need. Which, eh? Just nearly went flying. What's the matter? Hold on. Sharon's here. Oh, all right, baby. I've just gone flying over there. Have you? Oh, what? I'm not coming out here anymore. Don't, oh, Sharon, don't say that, baby. Come on, health and safety. Exactly. I'm in full. Everything's going right again today. Everything's gone right. New week, if you watch me... No, red... listen to this. Listen to I've not told Martin this. I'm going down the shops, so obviously there's trees on the road. Blinking pine cone hit me on the head, which is now fur, and it bounced off into the rat. Is this a what... rant? No. What is the chance of a pine cone Oh, my cone God, Sharon. Look, it's all, it's, it's all turning... Come here. Project Man's here as well, look. I've just shown them your little vehicles, Project Man. I've just come to collect my new tray. <laughs> what? Yeah, look, look, look. He's come to collect his new tray, look at that. That's my Versa tray from Electrostatic Magic. I've already spoke about that in this video. I said, Sharon, oh. carburetors. No, sewing. What, anything, Sharon. Needles and all that. Yeah, anything, is. anything. No, it's not yours. So keep your eyes off it, Project Man. The only way that you're going to get one is if you either buy one or, or if Electrostatic Magic yeah. are kind enough to give me a few, which I'm going to put in competitions. You'll have to enter a competition, won't you? Yes. I'll just take this one. Hey, you ain't taking that one. Anyway, I'm going to end this video, folks. The engine's back together, as you can see. Look, Cher. Oh, isn't that lovely? Don't be funny, baby. I've got to go because I'm making Well, I'm going to go now. I'm going to edit this video, shout, and uh, we'll see you in the next video. Don't forget, folks, please hit the subscribe button and ring that little notification bell and set, set your preferences to all if you do like our videos and uh, check out also Butler's Empire. I tend to do a lot of ranting on Butler's Empire. What are you doing? Snow fairy. On the Butler's Empire channel. I had a massive rant on there if you haven't seen it. If you're not if you're a subscriber to Butler's Empire, get yourself over there. You see a little more of this over there. You yeah. see a lot more of this and a lot more of that. Whoa. Come on, baby, get that kettle on. I'll see you later, folks. Bye for now. Come on, baby, let's make your trip over again. Yeah. Hold on. I've got to come out here, Sharon. What's, what's that noise I can hear? Look. Jesus Be careful, Sharon. It's a danger zone. Look at that, look. Unbelievable. Little RXX100. Again, restoration job. He finds them, doesn't he? Shout, he finds them, doesn't he? So you're going to see this on his channel, but uh, nothing to do with me, this, nor that one. But again, it's all there. Everything's there, look. Everything's there. A great restoration job. The engine and the frame numbers match on this one anyway. But uh, look at that, look, I do, isn't it? They're, they're starting to go up in value, even these little ones. Anything 80s or retro goes. Like me. You come from the 80s. 